Hello, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest in the start of our client series, and we have Miss Sydney Shelburne here. Sydney, say hey. Hey, guys. And it is actually Sydney's birthday today. She decided that we were the cool people she wanted to spend her birthday with. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment down below and wish Sydney a happy birthday. And if you're listening on the podcast, you want to take an extra step, we'll have her Instagram link down below. Go and wish her a happy birthday, the big two six coming in today. So how's it feel to be 26? Um, I still feel like I'm like 22. So yeah. I mean, it's all been different than yesterday. <laughs> Age is but a number. I mean, it's all about how you feel, in my opinion. Yeah. I always say that I'm going to be like Tom Brady and just get better as yes. I age. And that's what I'm going to do and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I already feel like it's going that way. Like every year you just feel younger. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel better than I did in my like I was about to say in my 20s, in yeah. my, <laughs> in my earlier 20s of like how I treated my oh, body 100%. and how just my health was yes. as a whole. I feel a lot better, even more so now um, than I do then. So oh, I, I always see it as that progression moving forward. Um, but I do want to start at the beginning before we dig into when she started or when you started with PD. So why don't you go ahead and tell me a little bit about what it was growing up? Because I know you grew up as a three sport athlete in high school. So what was that transition like? Or even what was your health like um, as far as your nutrition leading into going to college um so like during high school and stuff I always like ate healthy like during my sports but I also like enjoyed like team dinners and things like that and would like I didn't really know about macros or protein carbs fats all that kind of stuff um so once I got out of high school I and was done playing sports I kind of had to find what I was going to do next to stay in shape um and I kind of went and I did like T25 with like Sean T and mm -hmm. did those videos in my basement and then I think it was like 2016 I was like you know what this is getting so boring and I always followed people on Instagram and like I want to have abs like them type of thing and so I um, followed this girl and ended up doing a 12-week challenge which was absolutely terrible because <laughs> everyone that was doing the challenge had the same workouts the same nutrition um, and it was whether you were like 20 pounds overweight or if you were like me looking to put on muscle you're doing the exact same thing and it was kind of like I was going through a contest prep but I had no idea because yeah. we were I was eating like 14 to 1600 calories calories, um, doing like 45 minutes of running like three times a week on top of like strength training. And it was absolutely terrible. And so that's kind of how I got started in my fitness. And then I never really looked back from then. Yeah. So with that 12 week challenge, obviously, now you're able to look back and be like, that was terrible. Oh, yeah. But when you were going through it, what were your thoughts going through it? And what was your experience? Did you love just having that push having that group again? And what did that look like? Um, so it was really good for me because I've always been like competitive and athletic. And so it was I was working towards something um, and I didn't really know any different like the, that it was terrible at the time. But looking back on it, obviously, I was like, that was actually terrible. <laughs> um, but in the moment, I did feel like it was quite restrictive. But I was like, maybe this is just how fitness is supposed to be. Um, and then after I finished the 12 weeks, I realized that I had no muscle, obviously, when I had lost all this weight um, from the challenge. Um, and I kind of boycotted the gym for a few weeks after that because I was just so burnt out from this. And I was like, is this really how fitness is supposed to be? Um, and so that's kind of my experience from first getting started in um, fitness and nutrition. Yeah. And with that of you kind of feeling burnt out from the challenge, I know that after your first prep as well, you ended up feeling pretty burnt out and kind of, I don't want to be in the gym anymore because like you said, is this how fitness is supposed to feel? Because I feel very burnt out and yes. run down. So what did you do to get yourself back into the gym after you had that 12-week challenge? You had that time where you're like, I literally do not want to go near the gym. Well, how did you get back into the gym? Was it more of you just having that discipline and realizing this is what I need to do? Or did you find a different way to go about it that made you more welcoming to it? I think that's when I decided that I was going to learn what macronutrients actually were because I had like a meal plan for that challenge. And like I said, everyone was eating the same thing. And so that's kind of when I dug into like macros and different things like that. And I found a more sustainable way, obviously, than a meal plan with like, and it was all like plain Greek yogurt, no salt, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I found that it, it didn't have to be that way. Um, and so then I dove more into like the macro side of it and more like strength training and not so much running and high intensity um, 
workouts. Yeah. So with that 12 week challenge, was that while you were in college or what was that time frame? So yeah, that was my freshman year of co- or sophomore year of college, I think. Okay. Um, and I was also playing soccer um, at community college at the time too. Okay. So I was doing that on top of the challenge. Yeah. And then you ended up going to a different college and then transferring to the college that you ended up finishing your degree at up at. So I am assuming, and I'm going to go ahead and ask, when you started to dive into like, is this how it has to be and start learning about food? Is that when you decided to switch to an exercise science major? Or were you always wanting to go the path of exercise science and just didn't know what it was going to look like? Um, So even when I was in community college, I had no idea what I wanted to do because I, I, when I grew up, like my only passions were like sports and things like that. And I didn't really know what I could do with that um, as like a career. And so when I went away to college, I uh, kind of dove into the dietetics part of it. And then I was like, maybe this isn't exactly what I want to want to be doing. Um, and so then I switched over to exercise science and I knew that like my passion for fitness, I wanted to help others with that. And that's kind of how I ended up in the exercise science realm. Yeah. I love that. And that's uh, similar to myself of just getting into college, not really knowing what I want to do, because how can you expect (laughs) someone who hasn't had necessarily a specialization before college to be like, hey, now decide what you're going to do the rest of your life. (laughs) Yes, at 18. And so I went into college with actually, and I graduated with a broadcast journalism degree, but halfway through or at the beginning of my sophomore year, I realized I didn't want to do broadcast journalism. And And I was like, well, I'm a little bit too far into my degree. I don't want to stay in school longer. And I was actually trying to graduate early. So I finished up the degree, but I took all the fitness classes that I could take and hit my hours that I needed to with getting a degree because there's always a minimum hour even if you finish everything (laughs) else. Because I had finished all of my degree and uh, my minor, but then it was like, you just need hours. I was like, perfect. We're going to learn about fitness because I had found it myself. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And I just want to help other people. So it's really fun to be able to see what's capable inside of with having a degree without having a degree of just working towards being able to help other people. And I think that's a really powerful thing to be pulled to of I literally don't know how this is going to look, but I know I want to help other people. Yes, exactly. That's exactly how I felt. And I feel like there's just so much that you learn, even with like an exercise science degree, you still don't know so much about coaching (laughs) and you're like oh like I actually didn't learn exactly how to be a coach in college and so there's always like that learning curve um to helping others as well yeah so as soon as you got out of college what did it look like for transitioning into a job did you immediately start coaching people and then find out oh crap I don't know how to coach what did that progression look like for you um so after college I knew that I didn't want to move back to my hometown in Illinois and so I kind of just like searched out jobs Um, personal training. I was like, I did personal training actually before I went back to college. Um, And I was like, is this really what I want to be doing? Because I was like, I don't know, like, can I make a career out of this? Mm -hmm. Everyone was always like, Sydney, you can't make a career out of being a trainer. So anyway, after college, I just decided that I was going to look for a personal training job. And I actually landed a job in Kansas um, where I was able to be an independent contracted personal trainer. So I got to build up like my own clientele um, and things like that. So I did that for like a year and a half. And then um, I moved to Texas and went fully online. Awesome. So when you did start to coach uh, and are train in person, what did the transition look like when you first started to look for your own coach? Was that something that you were already on Instagram and you started to, you had mentioned, oh, I see these girls with abs. I want to look that way. Um, Was it that you're just seeing a bunch of stuff or did you always know that you wanted to have someone help you out? Um, it was more so like I saw people on Instagram and I was like, I feel like I would learn a lot more. And I like to be like as an athlete, I like to be just told what to do and have the plan so I can execute. And so that was the biggest thing for me. And like when you're coaching other people, you don't really want to take care of your own stuff, right? So you just (laughs) want to be told what to do. And so I had a few different coaches throughout like my fitness journey before hiring Alex. Um, and I found them all through like Instagram. Yeah. And I think that's really helpful to talk about is just that coach do need coaches and it's not always just because like you 
don't know what to do. Sometimes it can be of, I want to take something off my mental plate so I can truly show up for my clients the way that I know I need to. And I think that also shows a lot of self-awareness of understanding I'm in this part and for me to pour into other people the way I want to, I find myself putting myself last. And so being able to push yourself forward because your health allows you and having those things taken care of allows you to not only show up better for other people, show up better for yourself, show up better for your job and excel in those aspects instead of always putting yourself on yes, the back. Yes, I agree. And then just like getting that learning experience from the coach that you have as well, mm -hmm. um, getting another perspective on it. Yeah. So when you did sign up with your first coach, was it in the goal to do a bikini competition? Did you already know that? Or were you just starting with them as a lifestyle client and then realized you loved this and wanted to come into competing? Yeah. So I always like in the back of my mind, even like 2017, I was like, I think I want to compete sometime. But I was always, I'm never, I'm not like, I don't like to be the center of attention mm -hmm. type of thing. And so I was like, I would never get up on the stage in like heels with yeah, just me. Yeah, sparkly bikini, yes. <laughs> just me, all and the lights so on me. I was like, oh, maybe one day I'll do it. And then last, or 2020, I was like, okay, I think I actually want to do this. And so that's when I kind of started looking for a coach like actually that was doing preps. Mm -hmm. And so with that, before you got into fully deciding and committing, I want to do a prep, I want to compete. What did fitness in your own life look like? Yes, you were a trainer for other people, but that doesn't mean that, oh, my health was in the best spot or I really had different metrics nailed down. Like what was keeping you up at night or where were you at and where did you want to go within your fitness journey at that time before you had decided I want to compete? I think the biggest thing for me was I was a very like all or nothing mindset. Like I was either going 100% at my macros, hitting them like to the T, or I was just like boycotting, tracking and eating whatever I wanted. And so that's something that I wanted to mend before I decided to do a prep just because your relationship with food before hopping into a prep is the key to success, I believe. Yeah, I can definitely second <laughs> that. And if you are having a strained relationship with food, or you just feel like you're not really understanding food, doing a prep and going into that restriction, because it is a massive restriction, restriction, it's extreme dieting, uh, that can be very difficult on your headspace. And I think that that's really important to look at when you look at your past of you see, okay, I did this 12 week challenge, and it was kind of all or nothing. And I went all in and then I was so burnt out. And then I go and I do this prep and I go all in and then I'm so burnt out. And I need to find what this harmony is for me to be able to track my food, feel good about myself, train because I know I like to, and I know this makes me feel good but also ensuring I can make a lifestyle out of this instead of that all or nothing. So what do you feel like helped you when it came to all or nothing and changing that mindset? Um, I feel like Alex helped me with this a lot, actually. And like last year, I know like after my prep when I was struggling, I struggled with the all or nothing mindset after prep even last year some. And he reminded me that it's not just like a black or white, ex black or white experience in fitness, right? Like there's going to be some gray area. And in prep, it might be like black or white, like you're either going all in or you're, mm -hmm. you're not. And so after prep, you really had to find that balance of like, what does fitness look like to you outside of prep and knowing like, why you are doing this like because um even like when I was um doing fitness before like I if you look at my body I was so inflamed because I wasn't feeling my body body properly with like nutrients and things like that and so just reminding myself like how I feel when I do eat crappy or um how, versus how I feel when I feel my body with nutrients and things like that. Yeah, 100%. And with that, I think it's very important to recognize, like you said, in prep, it might be black and white. But in another time, it might be a darker gray, might be lighter gray, might be somewhere in between there. But realizing that your body and the type of life you're living serves you at a different time. And I think that was huge for me coming out of prep is recognizing that it doesn't, for me to be successful or to me, for me to accomplish something, I don't have to have the exact same mindset that I had in prep. That mindset, that dedication, that monotony, and that that schedule was needed to be successful in that way. And once you shift out of a prep, it's looking at what's needed for me to be successful in this next chunk of time that I'm doing in my life, instead of holding on to, okay, I was either praised for this, or this was just how I think it should be, because I'm, I'm checking every single box. I'm getting everything done. But that's not realistic no. for a daily thought. Like prep isn't 
day to day. No. <laughs> it is prep and it is a section of time that you're doing that in. So I think it's really helpful to be able to look at what are my goals right now and what do I need to succeed in that? And seeing that success and schedule and balance looks different at different parts of your life depending on what you're going after. Mm, I agree. And just knowing that it's okay to not be perfect. <laughs> yes. That was the biggest thing for me because I'm very much a perfectionist. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm not being perfect. But like, that's going to look different, like you said, outside of prep and when you have to be perfect, mm -hmm. right? And I think that also comes with following a plan is within prep, the plan is to hit everything. Yes. And outside of prep, you might still have macros in place or cardio in place or mark. You're probably going to have all of those things yes. in place, <laughs> but it's not the same. You don't need to hit things to a T the same way. And that's the new plan. And I think, again, shifting that mindset of I have to hit triple zeros and hit everything and never puss out and just get up and do the thing versus, okay, I can have a, a range within these macros. I can understand that this is the new plan instead of getting stuck in the old plan rules and letting those rules dictate the new plan that doesn't need those same exact rules. Yeah, I agree 100%. And it just like puts a lot less pressure on yourself when you realize that it's okay to be that way. Um, and like you said, having those new expectations for yourself in that next season of life. 100%. And when you got to this point of feeling like, okay, I, I don't love this all or nothing. I need to figure out what this lifestyle looks like for me. How did you or what was it in your head that you were thinking that you needed to change? Like, what was your headspace of, okay, I need to change this? Or was it more of, this is kind of how life is going to be, is it's going to be off and on because that's what I've seen or that's what I've experienced? I think I knew I needed to change because the all or nothing is not like sustainable at all and then you have like where you're going like for most people like the all or nothing they usually like lose 20 pounds and then they gain the 20 pounds back mm -hmm. and so that's not something that I wanted to go through and I knew that I needed to show up for myself and find the balance that I was looking for um that wasn't that all or nothing mindset yeah. And with coming to that realization of, okay, I don't want that for the rest of my life, that takes some time to get to. I mean, you you kind of experience it and it kind of is the norm. Yeah. And the, like if we look at society and how people go about dieting, how people go about their health, how people go about fitness, that seems normal of, okay, I'm going to lose the weight, gain it back. That's kind of how life goes. So did you know that there was a life that you could live that that wasn't happening? Or were you just hoping that you could get to that point? Um, I don't know if I knew that there was like that point out there. And I feel like when you look at Instagram and things like that, that's just kind of how fitness was. But now you have people showing you that it can be this thing where it's not an all or nothing mindset where you can have balance within your life and still reach your fitness goals. Um, and I think that's talked about more than when I first got into fitness. And that made me realize that there is this other side of the um, all or nothing mindset. Yeah. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So when you first started working with a coach, what kind of tests or challenges did you run into of going through a prep, not only going through the prep, but just experiencing working with a coach where there are things that you were like, oh, I really love that I'm getting this out of the coaching experience or things that you weren't super happy with? What did that look like for you? Um, so for my first prep, I didn't really obviously know what to expect in a prep coach. And so I was just like, well, this is how it is. And that's how prep is. Um, and it was very much like, I just have to check the boxes. This is what I was doing. And I started with the coach before I even decided that we were going to prep. We were actually going to build for wellness, mm -hmm. um, which obviously now we know that I'm not big enough for <laughs> wellness. <laughs> um, but so then we decided, hey, like, do you want to stop? Up on the bikini stage this year, which was in 2021. And I was like, hey, why not? Um, and so we kind of went through the prep and there, like I said, it wasn't really like I knew what to expect within the prep. Um, 
And so I kind of just went along with it. And then when I hired Alex, I realized that there was like a lot more to coaching. Um, and it wasn't just like, this is what you need to do. But more so like when I am working with Alex, I feel like we're more like a team and kind of come up with a plan together um, to fit like what my lifestyle is at the time, especially when I was struggling post show. It was kind of like, hey, like this is what needs to get done. Where can I meet you um, in the middle to help with where you're at in your fitness journey? Yeah. And to expand on just, okay, I didn't know what to even expect. I think a lot of people end in that situation. And that's also where it comes people hesitant to make the commitment financially and within their life of hiring a coach. So within hiring that first coach, even before you knew, and even within hiring Alex, was there kind of hesitation of, okay, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is right, but I'm putting my money into this person's hand. I'm putting my health into this person's hand. Did you have kind of an internal objective? there or were you just like I need to do something so here we go let's see what this is all about yeah so funny story I actually hopped on a call with Alex in October of 2020 when I decided that I wanted to do a prep and like I hopped on the call and I was like yo I have to hire Alex right but I had just moved to Kansas and I obviously didn't have like my clientele built up and I was like I don't know if I can afford this right and so I looked around for a few more coaches and I finally settled for one which was a little cheaper than Alex which isn't always the best option. Um, and I decided in January, that's when I was going to hire the coach. I ended up with going a little, with a little bit cheaper option. Um, and we went from there. And then I just started my prep in April of that year, I believe. Good deal. And with that, I think it's important to talk about when it comes to pricing, because we, we want to be able to dive deep, not only within your experience with PD as a whole, but just talking about and shedding some more light on the fitness industry, on prep, on the experience, and a it often happens that people want to save some money. And I I get that through and through. I've I've been there myself of, hey, like how different can it be? I'm just gonna go with this option. They either seem like they know what they're talking about, or this does fit my budget. I just financially can't make that that gap. If you were to go back in time, what would you or what would you even tell someone now of like, hey, the cheaper option isn't always the option that you would go with of really kind of digging into and even circling back to you saying, I got on that call and I knew I wanted to hire him. Like, how how would you want that to go if you were to do it again? Or if you were to talk to someone who's in a similar position of you of saying like, hey, sometimes the higher price point is going to get you that result that you're wanting. And there's a reason that that price point is there. Yeah, I definitely agree with the price point thing. And I definitely tell people this when they are looking for a prep coach and they ask me on like my past experiences. But I don't think I would go back and change hiring Alex back in October just because I wouldn't have that experience that I had last year and really being able to compare the two and how different they were from my prep from 2021 to 2022. Um, and so I'm, I'm grateful for that experience and the lot, the amount of like learning I got from that. Um, so I really wouldn't go back. And we even talked about this in the middle of prep and Alex is like, it just wasn't meant to be then. And like, I'm glad that you had that experience with the other coach um, and then was able to come to him. Yeah. And I, I love that you have that mindset towards it because it is so helpful if you take the mindset, I'm going to learn from this experience instead of, I wish I didn't do that. You only know what you know, and you can't get mad at yourself for what you don't know. Exactly. You made the decision with the information that you had at that time, and you were able to grow as a person, as a competitor, and as a coach from that experience. So I think that it is very helpful to look at those experiences instead of, I messed up, I wish I didn't do it that way of, no, I learned from that, and I'm able to see the other side of it and see what I want to push towards as a whole. Exactly. And I feel like I learned so much. And I even told myself like going into this prep, I'm like, if I made it through that prep, I can do anything. I can literally <laughs> do anything. Yes. Uh, so with your first prep, and so just in case you don't know Sydney's story, she prepped in 2021. Uh, and she did two shows? Yes, two, two shows. shows. And yes. then you prepped this year in 2022 with Alex um, and did a regional show and then went ahead and did a national show, which we'll get into here in a second. But with those with that first prep and you saying like, I didn't know what to expect. So I just did what I needed to do. I know we've had conversations or you've even expressed on Instagram of just being in this place of having extremely low food, extremely high cardio, feeling so bad all the time, but feeling that's how I'm supposed to feel. And actually, when we were at a national show this, um, this year with one of our clients, Morgan, 
Uh, we were standing and she was getting pumped up before finals and her friend was standing there and they're like, oh, we've talked so many times how this prep was night and day difference than my past prep with her past coach. And she had said the phrase, and of course it stuck with me because once you hear it, you'll agree, where she said, like, I didn't know I could feel this good or be this healthy through a prep. And I've talked to you before and you've said, I didn't think that I could get stage lean feeling this healthy. Now, prep, is always going to be a grind. There's always going to be a push unless you're genetically elite and you just like get dick skin lean, then that happens to some people. But for the mass majority of people, that is going to be hard no matter what. But I can second of the fact of like my past prep, I've never felt as healthy or as responsive to get to that point. And that was also the leanest and best I have ever looked when it comes to competing, which kind of feels like it would be the opposite of, okay, I feel healthy. I don't feel like I'm dragging myself into the ground, that means that I'm not going to get as lean because it's always more, 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 more. But you found out it wasn't always more, 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 more. So if you were to compare the two preps, what would you say about like how one prep went, how your final look was compared to this most recent prep with Alex? Um, So my first prep, like you said, I was doing a ton of cardio, a ton of steps. I think I had like 20,000 steps on top of like 80 minutes of cardio day. My food was pretty low. Um, And while I was on lower food, I would say for a longer period of time, this prep, um, everything else was so much better, like from stress, um, just like fatigue on my body and just things like that. Alex was really good at managing that. And so I felt so much better, even though I was on lower food for a longer period. um, I wasn't doing um, the amount of cardio that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And you can only do so much cardio until your body is just like, what are you doing to me? me (laughs) And so I would say that was the biggest thing between the two preps for me. Yeah. And how would you f- say you felt health-wise as a whole from the first prep to the second? Because again, it, it, you you think and the logical part of your brain wants to tell you, if I'm not suffering, I'm not going to get as lean. Or if I don't feel like shit, I'm not going to get to that point. Because a lot of people in prep do glamorize the you got to grind, yes. you got to feel like <laughs> shit all the time. And again, there are days that you do feel like shit. But what would you say comparatively that looked like for your health as a whole? I felt so much healthier uh, overall, and you could just see it in my skin. Like mm-hmm. I was smiling I was during my check-ins, <laughs> my my skin. I didn't look like a dead animal in all my <laughs> check-in pictures, and you could just tell that I was like thriving way more than last prep. And like you said, there are days where you feel like shit and you don't want to get up and go and do the things that you have to do. But overall, even just like talking with my friends, I'm like, it's insane how different we felt from that prep to this prep. Yeah, and did you think that was possible to feel healthy like that throughout a prep? No, absolutely not. And even after my last prep, I was like, do I ever want to do this again? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it can feel that way if you've gone through. Anyone who's listening that's been through quite a traumatic prep, for lack of a better word, it can feel like, oh my gosh, this is the way that it has to happen and I don't want to live my life like this. And so it's really cool when I get to experience, especially competitors, going from one coach and coming over to working with Alex and saying those things. Like when Morgan was saying it, I know you've said it before, and a multitude of Alex's other clients, myself included, of just saying, I didn't know that I could be healthy like this. I didn't know I could feel this good. I didn't know my physical he could even look like this. And I think that also comes from just coaches throwing things at the wall and again, glamorizing that more, 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 and not understanding that there is a push and pull to this. And you do need to be cognizant of not only where someone's mental headspace is, what volume that they can handle on their body, training and cardio and just exhaustion as a whole, and how much fatigue management is being done. Like you said of, okay, I wasn't as fatigued all of the time of running myself into the ground. And that's something that you find out as a coach of where someone's limits are at. And for you, again, you reach that threshold with cardio, if you're getting more negative return than positive return, and Alex was able to see that pull back cardio and get you in a spot where you're continuously responsive instead of in the spot where you got to like pound against the wall. Yeah. And just being able to keep up with like strength training, this prep was completely different. I remember last year, I would just like pick up the weight to shoulder press and I'd be like two reps in and I would feel so fatigue just from like all the cardio and stuff I was doing and so I like thoroughly enjoyed my training up until like the last couple weeks of prep um, and I was able to keep most of my strength obviously you're gonna lose some strength but it was way better than last year in prep 
Yeah, I absolutely love to hear that. And then when we talk about placings within prep, I do want to talk about kind of how things happened last year and how they came into this year. I think you had an incredible mindset and thought process after your first show this year, but we'll go ahead and fill them in on what the shows looked like. Um, And also, I want to talk a little bit in between your first and second show for that first prep for you. Um, So my first show that I did was the Republic of Texas last year, um, and I ended up getting, I believe I was sixth place out of like 20 girls so pretty good for my first show for your first show (laughs) um and then after that we took four weeks between that show and my second show I did and I did the I think it was the Dallas Pro Mm -hmm. um and I ended up winning my class there um and then the I got second in the open um so that's kind of and then I was going to do nationals that year and I decided that The national stage was always going to be there, and I didn't need to do the third show. (laughs) Yeah. And would you say that after the first show that – or going into the second show is kind of when you made that decision? Because I know there was a big push in between that first and second show to get to where you needed to be. Yeah. So between the first and second show, I lost like 12 pounds in like four weeks. So it was it was a grind between those. And I didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, and then when we got the feedback from the judges after that second show, they were like, you would be stupid not to go to nationals. And my coach wanted me to do it. And so I was like, you know what, I have to do it. Like all these people want me to go to nationals. And like, this is what I have to do. Um, And I think I got like a week after that show and I was like, you know what, I put my body through a lot this year and I just think that I need to do what's best for myself and just take a break, right? Like this is my first season as a competitor. I don't have to go step on the national stage and my heart just wasn't there. And so I decided that I was going to pull back and it was a hard decision because I had like a lot of people from my team were coming to support me. They had bought tickets and all of that. Um, And so I obviously felt bad because they all had to like cancel their trip there. Um, But I did what was best for me and my mental health. um, And even though it was like a very hard decision to do. Yeah. And I, I love that you're talking about that because it is so hard to make that decision. And especially in prep and especially with social media, because you are very much so on. And it's very normal when someone's in a prep to be like on social media all the time. And then you kind of like don't see them yes. in the improvement <laughs> season. Um, but like you're posting, you're getting so much like affirmation that you look so good, so much interaction. People are talking about you. They're talking to you more frequently. It's a it's a really good feeling. Yes. It feels great <laughs> to get that attention. You're seeing your body get to this new place. And then it comes with that pressure of that, what's the next step? I've, I've done the regional stage. Uh, people are telling me I should do the national stage. And like, that's the next step as a competitor is I go straight from regional to national. Um, now, if you went ahead and did it outside of the exhaustion side of things of, okay, now I need to get to the show and perform at this show. How do you feel like you would have even done at the national stage if you would have gone? Honestly, I'm not really sure. I think that I could have, like, I was lean enough to be there, but I don't think that my stage presentation and that would have been up to par for the national level. I think it would have been a great experience, but I don't regret at all not going to the national stage that year. Yeah. And what would you say, because you talked about it being hard mentally to make that decision, how were you able to kind of shut out all the outside voices and really figure out what is going to be best for me? Because again, that decision is so hard to make in the moment. And I can even speak towards like myself of this past competing season of we had to make the decision, do we push six more weeks to get to the national stage? And if you followed along with the podcast or YouTube of how my season went, it didn't go as I wanted it to go. It didn't go as planned. And I was steadfast on getting on the national stage and having that conversation with Alex as my coach, having that conversation with Alex as my husband, having that conversation with Alex as my business partner um, was very difficult difficult. And then having that internal conversation with myself of, am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for other people? And where am I going to be at the end of this? Because if I push for six more weeks after the glitz and the glam, who's going to be there to pick me up off the floor? Because I know I'm going to be there and who knows how much energy I'm going to have to pick myself up off the floor. So it's so hard to make that decision. How do you feel like you were able to make that decision and shut out the noise? 
Honestly, I'm not sure. I think I just decided that like, so when you push like two, four more weeks in a prep, it feels like an eternity. Oh, yeah. And so I was (laughs) like, I just don't think I can mentally do this. And so I think I talked to like my mom and things like that. And I just decided that like, hey, this isn't for me. Next year, I can step on the national stage if I want. Um, And just decided to do what was best for me mentally. So obviously, you had gotten on a call with Alex before this prep. You had worked with this other coach. When you first were looking for coaches, what drew you to PV or what was the reason that you got on the call with Alex to begin with? I don't remember exactly, but I know I had followed him on social media and I'm sure I saw like some of his transformations and the glutes that his clients yes. had. <laughs> and I was like, yo, I want, I want glutes like that. And so that's kind of what drew me to that. And then what really drew me like once I got on the call was just like Alex's personality and things like that. Um, and so that's kind of how I found PD. Yeah. And what would you give for um, advice when it comes to looking for a coach? Would you say like, hey, make sure you follow them for a period of time, reach out to past clients? What would you recommend there for people? Um, Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with coaches is like one coach might be great for you, but not good for me. And so really knowing what you're looking for in a coach, like, do you want to be told what to do? Or do you want to be educated on why you're doing something? Or do you want a lengthy check in? Or do you want like, hey, well, like, we're good here, we're going to keep here this week, great job. So it's kind of just really what you're looking for, what kind of personality you're looking for, I would definitely like get on a call with a couple of different coaches, follow them on social media, like you said, just see what kind of content they're putting out. Um, And then definitely speaking to previous um, clients of theirs is going to be a great option um, just because you can hear about their actual experience with that coach. Yeah, 100%. And with that of talking about not only making sure you get on the call and do your due diligence. But I love that you mentioned of figuring out what you're looking for, because I think that's where people get a little bit misaligned as they see this coach has great results, their clients love it, I want to go with them without having any thought process of how do they execute their coaching? And is that the kind of coaching that I respond to? And sometimes you have to learn through trial and error, and you have to make a mistake, or you have to make a misstep, or have an experience and learn, oh, this isn't what I need. And that's okay. Because again, if you're learning through it, we're in a good spot. But really figuring out what am I wanting from this experience? And that's what we always try to vocalize and always try to do within not only our marketing, but just the way we speak to people of like, this is what you're going to get. This is what the coaching is like. Is that something that you're looking for? Because I'm not going to be changing the type of person or the type of coach that I am, so to speak. I want you to make sure that you're aligned with this. So I love that on the call, you were able to really just feel like, oh, I am aligned to this as a whole. And you talked about earlier of within sports, you like to just be able to execute. And within PD, we talk a lot about education. So how did that kind of feed into what you were doing when in the past, you'd really just wanted someone to tell you what to do. And now you're like, I kind of want to learn about this, but I still want someone to tell me what to do. Yeah. And so I think that was the biggest thing, like with my last coach, like I was perfectly okay with being like, Hey, like, here's your macros. This is what you need to do. Just like go execute. But then after prep, when I was struggling, I was like, maybe I need someone that's going to help me find this balance in my life and kind of talk me through this and educate me on why we're doing what we're doing. Um, And so that's kind of where that shift came in. Like, I didn't really know that's what I needed. But once I hired Alex, I was like, okay, like this is exactly what I was needing. And there's, I still like, I'm okay with like, okay, this is what I need to execute. Mm-hmm. But it's always nice to know like, hey, like this is what we're trying to get out of this training, or this is why we're making this nutritional adjustment going into this training phase. Um, and so that's kind of where I decided that I needed to be with that. Yeah. And do you feel like with that education and with those little kind of notes as, as you're going along, that you feel better in your body because you know why you're doing it. So it doesn't just feel like I'm doing this because I was told to? Because no one likes that answer of you're doing it because I told you to. Um, Do you feel like more confident of I can navigate through my daily life because I have this understanding and then I have also this dedication of I'm doing this to get this outcome? Yeah, I think it's it gives you more of like a a timeline, but you kind of know, okay, like this is the next step of why we're doing what we're doing. So definitely, I feel like you're able to execute a lot better when you know 
why you're doing something. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. And so then your first season ends, we're fast forward and back to after that first phone call through the season, your first season ends and you get on another call with Alex and you're like, okay, now we're going to do this. Now it's the right time. I want to move forward with it. Um, so during that whole prep, are you still following him on social and seeing everything that was kind of being put out and kind of just keeping your eye out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had like reached out to him during my prep actually, and just like had a few questions about things that were going on. And so like I kept in touch with him throughout that whole time, followed him throughout the time. And then after when I was struggling, I was like, okay, I need to reach out to him again. Mm -hmm. And so we hopped on a call and I was like, all right, do you have a spot open like as soon as possible that I can start? And that was like a year ago today, actually. I think oh, I took my well, pictures for him. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Happy one year. Yes. Uh, and with that, would you say it's beneficial for a competitor to have a coach outside of season? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest thing is like if you, for one, your coach is going to learn how your body responds, right? And so that's a great op or opportunity in your improvement season. But also a lot of people, if you don't have a plan and you're not like staying on top of your nutrition, your training, all of that, how do you know that you're actually getting better to make the improvements to step on stage again? Like if you're not eating properly, how do you expect to hop into a prep again um, if you weren't fueling to actually get to a place where you can cut from again mm -hmm. um, and just making sure that you're making the improvements on the different body parts that you were told to bring up. Yeah, a hundred percent. I very much so agree and second all of that. Um, and I also remember an Instagram post that after your first prep, when you were struggling, you talked about the thing that you learned from it or were able to grab from it is you were able to realize that that's the mindset that a lot of your clients personally are in. So how do you feel like that molded you? Not only having Alex there to help, did you feel like that also improved your own coaching as well as being able to relate to your clients and help? them? A hundred percent. Because I wouldn't say that I'm someone that has like struggled a lot in my life. And that was a time where I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what people deal with on a daily basis, right? And so I could really put myself in their shoes and have more empathy for them um, because I knew what they were going through. And so it's helped tremendously with my coaching as well. Absolutely love to hear that. And so when we are looking at getting into your next prep, obviously you started the prep from a much different spot than you started the last prep. You're always growing and evolving and gaining muscle, which is what we love to see. Um, but within starting that next prep, did you have certain things in mind of, okay, I need to do these things to set myself up for success? Or were there different um, attributes that you had learned through the past few months of working with Alex that you were like, these things take priority in this prep outside of things that might have taken priority in the prep prior? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I feel like I just had a better mindset going into it and knowing where I could give and where like I maybe came up short my previous prep. Um, and another thing for me was I was doing in-person training my last prep and this prep I wasn't. So I was able to prioritize my sleep a lot more. Um, I didn't have to get up at 3 a.m. to do my cardio or things like that. Um, and just eating more nutrient dense foods and not changing things up as much this prep was a huge one for me. Yeah. I love that you mentioned those two within sleep and nutrient density, because that is something that we really push forward within physique development. It's not just if you are checking the boxes of, okay, I hit my my macros and I did my cardio and I trained because that's only part of the equation. And I think that you learned that through this past prep of, okay, if I really prioritize the type of food that I'm eating, the quality of sleep and being able to emphasize these foundational things, I'm able to not only feel healthier, have a more responsive body and feel better as I go through these experiences as a whole. 100%. I agree. Yeah. So with your prep with Alex, you got started with it and then you have your first show. So what did that look like in comparison to your other regional shows that you had done? Um, so I actually did the same show that I had done my first year last year or my first show last year. Um, and it was, it was different because I didn't have a coach there. Right. So it was the first time navigating like backstage by myself and things like that. Um, but it was, it was very smooth because 
even going like into peak week, we had a plan of like, this is what this week could look like, right? So that wasn't going to be like, this is the all or not, like this is the plan. But I kind of knew what to expect going into that week. And there was really no pressure. I knew that like all the work was done. This was the plan. Um, and I felt, I felt so much better on stage this year, just like my presence up there. I just felt like that's where I belonged. Mm -hmm. I'm I just love that. It makes me so happy that you felt that way because I know that you've also talked about on Instagram of just during your first prep of so many people speaking about the potential that you had or surprised it was your first season. And that also adds to like your decision to not go on to the national stage is even more impressive because you are getting all of these comments. And again, it feels like people are just telling you go, 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 go. And you have to make that decision and you realize this wasn't aligned with what I needed to do. And now being in a spot where you are able to show up for the show and be so aligned with this feels good. Like this feels like where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be accomplishing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And even though like it was hard because I ended my last season obviously with first place, right? And then I got on the stage this year and I got, I think I got four. So I did improve from my first show at the Republic of Texas, but it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like I just went from first place to fourth place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the beauty of bodybuilding is it's you might have shown up and it was your best physique, but it's really about who else is showing up that mm -hmm. day. Um, and so as long as you've improved from who you were the last time you were on stage, I think that's like the biggest thing about bodybuilding is it's not you're in control of what you're in control of. Yeah. And I very much so appreciate that you have that mindset because it would be very easy to get discouraged and be like, I don't look better. I don't feel better. This wasn't my best because I know for myself, what happened was going into the show, I was like, this is my best yet. I feel so good, so confident. And as soon as they placed me where they placed me, it kind of like internally, externally, you still got to keep smiling and act like nothing's wrong. Internally, like everything dropped inside of me. And I started questioning my myself, questioning my ability, questioning if I was even seeing things correctly. And you have like this um, like uh, identity shift of, oh my gosh, did I just like lie to myself this whole time? Was I even good enough? I didn't improve because you look at the metric of placing and you're just looking at that. But being able to see it truly is about improving from show to show because different people are going to show up, different judges are going to be there, they're going to be looking for something different at, at different times. And you have to have that security in yourself so that the sport doesn't eat you alive. Because if you let that take you, and of course, you're allowed to be upset about it. I was upset. I cried. <laughs> I threw my little fit. But you are allowed to be upset about it, allowed to be frustrated. But it wasn't something of, okay, I'm going to go to social media and trash everyone. Or I'm going to blame my coach because I did worse than I did the year prior or um, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't do this anymore because you had that sense of self and you had that understanding of I have improved, I look the best that I've ever looked and that has to be enough for me. Otherwise, again, you're just going to get eaten yeah. up by the sort and spit <laughs> out and then you're stuck with not even knowing what fitness is in your own life because you've always gone off of the judgment of other people. Exactly. And that's like the last thing you want to do in bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, because that's a, <laughs> quite the mental warfare that you are putting yourself through. Um, so then you go into your first national stage, which was so exciting, and it was USA's in Vegas. And so how did that experience go as a whole? Um, It was quite the experience. It's a whole nother level <laughs> yes. than the regional stage so like just even like being backstage and everything like that like everyone that's there they obviously like got top two or top five top two yeah, yeah top two at their show and so it's not like a regional show like where anyone can show up like you had to place to be there and so it was just like I don't even know how to explain it it was just another level mm -hmm. of bodybuilding the stage is way bigger um, there's a lot more pressure I would say at the national level but overall I feel like it was a great experience and I'm I'm glad that I um, decided to get on the national sh stage this year, and I can't wait to see the improvements I make yeah. to step up there again. I, I'm so excited to see the improvements. And she ended up getting center of second callouts, which is incredible for first national show, as well as she looked incredible. So it's definitely something, again, to be proud of and to be celebratory of. And I think that that thirst for more and like that proud but never satisfied kind of mantra, especially since she trains at Alpha Lee, she sees that Alpha Land. She sees that constantly. But recognizing like, I 
I can be so proud of what I accomplished here, but I can always yearn for more and push myself for more and understand I'm capable of more in this situation. And I think that having that mindset towards life is helpful, but towards competing specifically of I am in this for the long haul because my opinion is that or I at least don't push clients to do it as like a bucket list item because <laughs> the new space is perfect for that. So overlay that in a funny clip. But it, it it's not just for fun. It is fun, it but is. it's not just for fun. It's very intense and it's a lot to be putting your body through if you're not going to be doing it for the long haul or for just kind of multiple seasons that you're going through that experience. Um, and so being able to have that headspace of, all right, I'm going to come back better. I'm going to come back bigger. I'm going to come back and earn that center call out, um, I think is really powerful because now coming into this improvement season, you're a few weeks into your improvement season. How many weeks post-show? Um, Four and a half. Four and a half. How has this post show gone comparatively to last post show? Um, I would say much better. There's still been bumps in the road. Yes, there's um, always bumps. <laughs> I've done a lot of traveling this month. And so that kind of like I told myself this was gonna be I was gonna be perfect on my reverse and everything like that. And as much as you can tell yourself that, you're probably not gonna have the perfect reverse. Um, but it's been much better just like mentally. I'm still like enjoying the gym, getting back at it and things like that. Um and just much better overall. Yeah. And if you were to give advice to someone that is in a similar place as you or wanting to compete, what advice would you give to them? And whether it's about their mentality or whatever it may be, what advice would you tell them? Um, I would definitely say to make sure that, like you said, if you want to do prep, like make sure that you're all in it for yourself and not because you want to be lean or coming from a place of like hating what you look like because it's just going to make prep much worse, especially when you get out of prep, you've seen yourself that lean and now you have to put body fat back on um, and just making sure that you are in a place where you've uh, created enough density within your physique already to hop on the stage and not just being like, well, I've had a coach for two months and I just started lifting and I'm going to hop on the stage now. Um, <laughs> so those are a few things that I would probably. Yes. And that's very common. I've <laughs> yes. just been lifting for two months. I'm ready to hop yep. on stage, ready to get into a prep. <laughs> um, so what would you say that you were doing that wasn't working until you started with physique development? Um, I would say the training would be the biggest thing is I wasn't really, we weren't, didn't have enough volume and stuff on the body parts that I needed to bring up. For example, my glutes, um, my upper back, delts, chest, um, there wasn't enough targeted stuff toward that, um, until I hired Alex. So that was one of the biggest things for me. So with talking about the training, physique development is often known for their training because we're great at it. But for that training, did you were you apprehensive going into switching the type of training style or were you already bought in of, OK, this is going to work? Uh, what did that look like for you? Um, I was pretty bought in. I like I've seen Alex's results. And so therefore, I knew if I put the work in with his programming that I was going to see those same results. And so it wasn't it was very different from my old training. But it wasn't like, oh, man, like, I don't know about this. Like I, I was bought in from the beginning. Yeah. And for uh, working with Alex, would you say that you would recommend Alex to someone else if they were looking for a coach? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I think I've recommended plenty of people to <laughs> Alex who are now on Team PD. So I would definitely recommend anyone who's looking to step on stage or even if you're a lifestyle client who's serious about training, um, I would definitely recommend Alex. Good. I love to hear that. Uh, and would you say that PD and Alex have changed your quality of life as a whole? Because there's obviously fitness coaching in general. And you might think, all right, I'm going to get lean or I'm going to get jacked. But we often don't think about what that looks like in comparison to like just our journey on life and how we are going to improve as human beings. So would you say that you maybe got more out of it than you thought you were going to get out of it? Or what did that look like for you? Yeah, I would definitely say that. I think I've learned a lot about myself. Um, training, obviously, I said Alex is very good on educating on why you're doing stuff. And so I learned a lot from that, as well as like I talked about like hormonal health, skin health, all of that. I feel like that has improved. Um, and just like wanting to be a better coach because of Alex. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I always tell Alex that, that he pushes me to become better 
better. And just being in an environment around people that do want to push to be better is very helpful. And I know that's come up in your life recently with the move to Texas, which is just very recent here um, of living in Texas. And what has that done looking at the, again, the people that you're surrounding yourself with and what that looks like for the lifestyle that you're wanting to have? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I moved to Texas April, right in the middle of my prep. (laughs) Um, And it's, it was a huge game changer. So in my first prep, I was still training at like a commercial gym and things like that. And then this prep, I got to train at Alpha Land my whole prep. And that made a day and night difference in my training and just being there around people who are looking to get better every single day um, and other competitors was huge for me. Um, And then I also live with my best friend, Meg, who is also a competitor and coaching and things like that. And so we live and breathe the same lifestyle. And so that was a huge thing for me too. It wasn't coming home to like your roommate eating Chick-fil-A or whatever. It was like you were doing the same thing and you didn't really know any different because everyone around you um, is pushing you to be better and doing the same thing that you're doing. Yeah. And we've talked about how the training is different from past coaching experiences that she's had as well as the education and just someone that's caring about her health as a whole. But what else would you say sets PD apart if there are other things or if you want to kind of expand on what the difference is within other coaching experiences that you've either had or you've heard about just because someone who's maybe never had a coach before is kind of like you're saying it's better, but what what's better about it? I would say like just the attention to detail within like training, explaining like, like I said, you you know why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and the educational, like having the YouTube videos and things like that are super beneficial to make sure that you are actually properly doing what you're supposed to be doing. Even though you have a plan, you're not always executing it how it's supposed to be executed if you don't have the tools to show you how to execute. Um, so that's one of the biggest things with that. Yeah. And we're going to do something for Alex since he's not in the room. I'm going to have you kind of give a little testimonial slash um, act like you're talking straight to Alex in the camera of what he's done for you because we're going to have him watch this at a later date um, just to be able to let him hear because we we talked about, okay, what is going to be the best for who's doing the interview? Is it best if Alex is doing it because he's your coach? And we kind of had the thought process of, well, we might end up skipping over details because you guys both know the full story. And so trying to make sure that we're giving the full story, we're explaining things, and you get to also have interaction with other people as a whole. Um, But I do want him to be able to hear what he's done in your life because as many times as I can tell my husband that he is incredible at what he does and that he is awesome at what he does, sometimes you do need to hear it from some other people. So um, I would love if you can just kind of shout out Alex, let him know what he's done for you so that we can tell him how great he is. Um, So Alex, I'm so happy that you came into my life and honestly, you've changed it tremendously um, in realizing that I do love bodybuilding and it wasn't bodybuilding that I hated. It was just apparently you that I needed um, (laughs) to fall back in love with bodybuilding um, and always believing in me. when it was comes to training, nutrition, all that kind of stuff and making sure that I find my love for training again, that was a big thing for me is after my prep, I, I didn't love training. And so you brought that back into my life. And um, I just want to thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. Well, I love that. I'm so excited for him to listen to that. And I want to thank you so much. Not only is this Sydney's birthday, which again, if you have not commented wishing her a happy birthday, what are you doing? But it is also Sydney's first podcast. So yeah. everyone give her some freaking <laughs> snaps. I thought she absolutely killed it. Uh, so definitely hype up Sydney below. Follow her along to see her journey when she gets back on stage, whatever that timeline looks like. Uh, but we're also going to have some YouTube videos. So if you're listening to this on Monday when it is going out, on Thursday, we'll have a YouTube video going out with Sydney and Alex in a train with me where Alex is going to be put through his own training <laughs> and we are going to see how he fares in it. But go ahead and check out that YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed this. Follow Sydney. Um, and we are just so thankful for you guys for following along. And if you're interested in hiring Alex as a coach or anyone else on Team PD, then there is going to be an inquiry link in the description box or the show notes so that you can go ahead and click that and get on that call that Sydney did that did change her life. Those calls are absolutely free. So we can't wait to chat with you and be the last coach that you'll ever need.